again at the source of the River Severn, on top of the Cambrian Mountains in the middle of Wales. We've seen how the River Severn starts as a little trickle of water that oozes out from the boggy mountainside and flows for 350 kilometres to the sea. We've seen how settlements have grown up alongside the river. And we've seen how people use the river for transport. In this programme, we'll see how people use the water from the river itself and how important it is. Altogether, people take around 1,500 million litres of water out of the River Severn every day. Here, the river's passing through fields of growing crops. So, one thing the river water is used for is watering those crops. This is called irrigation. Dotted along the banks of the Severn, you can see hoses pumping water out of the river. On streams leading into the river, it's the same story. Farm, they grow flowers and potatoes, which all need a lot of water, at least five millimetres every day. Michael Bubb, the farmer, explains how they do it. We measure the rainfall in a little thing like this, which tells us how much rainfall we have in a day, and five millimetres is quite a considerable amount. You would be really soaked uh, with that amount. And so if we don't get the rainfall, we make it up with irrigation water. So it doesn't matter where the water comes from, as long as we have enough to keep the plants growing. So what kind of equipment do you use to spray your crops? Uh, the machine is about 450 metres long and the water is pumped through the 150 millimetre pipe in the top and then these sprinklers are applying the water at 40 different rates. There's 40 different sizes of sprinklers because as the machine moves the outside sprinklers have to put more water than the inside because of the area they're having to cover. So that's one system. You can see over in the distance there's a gun just over there. That's applying uh, about 200 gallons a minute through a, um, a traditional hose nozzle and that moves down the field. This water is vital to make sure these potato plants grow properly and produce healthy potatoes. In dry weather, farmers along the River Severn can take up to 150 million litres of water a day to spray onto their crops. Another use of water is to drive machinery. In many places, mills were built on the streams that flow into the River Severn, taking advantage of the power of running water. Water from this mill pond is used to drive this giant wheel. And to tell us how it all works is the miller, Alan. Alan, can you tell us how the process starts? By lifting a lever here, the water will rush out onto the wheel into buckets. The buckets will fill up and it, then it is weight of water. The more the wheel turns, the more buckets have water in, the faster the wheel will go. That is how you take power from the pool or the mill pond onto the water wheel. This mill wheel is nearly 40 feet across. It's made of cast iron with a great gear wheel mounted on it. The big gear turns a smaller gear in the side of the mill wall, which turns a wooden shaft inside.
This mill turns wheat into flour to make bread. But how does it do it? Now, this looks very complicated. What's going on in here? Well, these are the gears, Vanessa. This one here is a pit gear, which is connected to a stone nut with wooden cogs and turning the stone above. When the stone goes round, the wheat's fed into the stones and is crushed. Then comes down the chute here into the sack. If I open the sack and I use my shovel, you'll be able to see the wheat which is being crushed turning into what we call wholemeal flour. So is this just the pure wheat then? This is the local wheat off the fields above the mill turned by the wheel and crushed with local stone and that is turned into whole meal, meaning whole of the wheat now taken out. And it's all done using the power of river water. Water mills use fast flowing water in the steeper parts of the River Severn. There's another use of water in this huge building, right by the river. This is the power station at Ironbridge. It burns coal and makes electricity. But as well as coal, it needs a vast quantity of water. It gets that from the River Severn, and in it goes to the power station through this metal grill. And there's the water actually being sucked out of the river and into the works, over 100 million litres every day. In fact, as much river water flows through this building as goes straight on down the river. Jenny Collett showed me round, but we could hardly hear each other because of the noise from all the machinery. This is the giant turbine hall. The first thing they use river water for is heated up to make steam. The steam then drives the turbines that make the electricity. There's a massive pipe work in here, carrying steam and water round the building. Another use for water is to keep all the equipment in here cool. But once the water's done its job, it becomes hot and has to be cooled down itself. And that's what happens in these massive cooling towers. The warm water that's cooled all the equipment falls down through the air like rain. This cools it down. Jenny took me to have a look inside one of the cooling towers. water in here turns into a fine mist that rises up inside the tower. It comes out of the top like homemade clouds and 30 million litres of River Severn water blow away on the breeze. But most of the cooled water that falls through these cooling towers is pumped round and used again or put back into the river. There are two large power stations that use water from the River Severn. 
But the main use of water from the River Severn is for people to drink. Six million people, in fact. This is the Mythe Water Treatment Works in Tewkesbury, one of several along the River Severn, which provide water for the industrial cities of the Midlands. Water treatment works like this are built by the river because that's where they get their water from. This one takes 100 million litres a day out of the River Severn. This is where the water is taken from the river, but before it's safe to drink, all kinds of special processes have to happen to it, which is something that Kate Vickers from Seven Trent Water can tell us all about. Kate, what's going on down here? This is the river intake. This is where the water from the river goes into the works. And these big screens are to stop all the big bits of rubbish and whatever getting from the river into the works. So what are these screens filtering out? They're stopping things like old bottles, bits of wood, and even some dead fish down there. Although the nasty big objects have been caught, there's still much more that has to be done to clean up the river water. So what have we got down here? These are settlement tanks. What happens is the water comes in at the bottom of the tanks and goes up, and all the bits and the dirt drop down and drop to the bottom of the tanks. And as you can see, the clear water comes out through these channels and flows out there onto the rest of the works. There are still some bits in the water, and they're removed in this tank. Now, this water looks a lot cleaner. What's going on here? This is a sand filter bed. What happens is the water comes in and then flows down through a bed of sand. And what happens is that all the little bits that haven't been taken out by the other processes are caught in between the grains of sand, and the water that goes out is a lot cleaner. This is what happens in the sand filter bed. You can see how the sand cleans the water. Particles of dirt are trapped by the sand as the water flows down the tube. The water coming out the bottom is much cleaner. This is the final stage in purifying the river water before it's fit to drink. Oh, what are these bubbles for? They're bubbles of ozone. They come in the bottom, bubble up to the top and dissolve in the water and they're used to kill any remaining little bugs that are left in the water. The river water is now safe and clean. The clean water, ready to go off to customers, is kept in reservoir here, under the front lawn. There are nearly 20 million litres of water in these tanks. Along the River Severn, there are seven water treatment plants, all taking water from the river to supply towns and cities like Shrewsbury, Worcester, Gloucester and Bristol. With other people taking water from the river, it would dry up before it reached the sea. However, a lot of water finds its way back into the river to keep the water flowing. Much of this is wastewater and sewage from homes and industries. But before it can go back into the river, wastewater has to be cleaned and purified up to a safe standard. And this happens at a sewage treatment plant, like this one in Shrewsbury. In fact, along the River Severn, there are six sewage works that treat water from the towns and cities and put it back into the river. The sewage treatment works at Shrewsbury is in this large field by the river and outside the town, taking the sewage from 85,000 people. Well, I've come to meet Ken Lear, who's going to tell me how it all works. Ken, how does the rather revolting sewage that leaves our house end up as clean water? Well, when you flush the toilet or use the washing machine, pull the plug on the sink, it all goes into the sewers through six-inch pipes and then into a larger sewage waste. 
So what we have here is everything that the people of Shrewsbury send down their drains, as well as what washes off the roads when it rains. The first stage of the clean-up is to fish out the solid bits and pieces with this machine. Some surprising things get flushed down the toilet. The dirty water flows on to the next stage. In this tank, bits of grit and gravel sink to the bottom. In this big circular tank, any other solids settle on the bottom and the clear water runs off the top and flows away. Any bits and pieces that have got through this far are caught here. Now, this is a very fine sieve. What are you collecting here? This is a fine belt screen, and the reason for it is a lot of plastics. These days, we do get a lot of plastic floating right through the works. But the other uh, thing this screen does, which uh, we found as soon as we put it in, we get a lot of frogs, toads and newts coming down in storms. Being an old town, combined sewage system, they get into the drains, back into the sewers, they make the long journey down through the sewers, they get through the works, when they reach here, they're taken up by the screen, dropped into the basket, so that when we clean the basket out, as you can see, we've got this bin we call a frog transporter. You know, if we find them last thing before we leave off, we put them in here, they're safe till morning, and then we move them on down and put them in the pond. This is the final stage of the cleaning process. The water is sprayed over this bed of special stones. But the water is still dirty and has tiny microscopic bits of sewage in it. So the stones have bugs and beasties living on them, like fly larva, bacteriological slime, and even worms. All these bugs actually eat the remaining specks of sewage and make the water clean. It's a completely natural process. So the water that started off in the River Severn and was cleaned up and used by someone is ready to go back to where it came from. And off the water goes clean enough to go back into the river and to be used by someone else.